And so when guys come into, of course, the um, our industry where it's basically commission-based, uh, they don't know how to handle it that well um, because they, they've been used to getting a regular paycheck. But that paycheck is just a survival check. <laughs> it's not going to change much of their lives at all. We have an opportunity in our industry to actually change people's financial lives. What's up, everybody? I've got a special guest for today's episode. I'm telling you, this could be one of our fastest growing and biggest YouTube episodes ever. It was when I interviewed the greatest roofing salesman of all time. Good golly, O'Malley, Omar Algali. And I got him back in the studio here. We've been working together for two years. He's out of the Houston market. He's done some big things with his commercial division. He's grown his company. He's making a huge impact. And he is a leader within our community. Um, his transition and growing his business, a little bit about, you know, since last time we talked, there's been a lot of crazy stuff happening in the world, how he's continuing growth, continuing, you know, his pursuit and all this craziness of the world. So welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom, my man. I appreciate have, ha you being here, bro. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here out of Africa, a small town called Lone Sar. Um, basically, uh, I'm just grateful to be here. Uh, once again, as you usual, I usually my sound off is my golly, good golly, Miss Molly, it's all golly. So uh, I'm glad to be here with you, Lee, and to talk about, you know, growth and how we can help young entrepreneurs out there. Absolutely, too. man. And uh, I tell you what, it's about being eternally optimistic. I tell That's you, right. <laughs> uh, I love this concept. So can you expand on what it means to be eternally optimistic? Well, to be eternally optimistic to me simply means that you know, when one has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, um, there's no downside to life. Life is going to be difficult. It was meant to be that way. That's part of the plan. But when you have that eternal optimism, it pretty much boils down to this. You know who you are. You know why you're here on this earth. You know where you're going after this life is over with. And so because we have such big things that are waiting for us in the world to come, well, guess what? There's much to look forward to. So there's really no reason why to live, to live in despair, um, even though life is hard. Um, but with an eye of faith, you can always have that mindset, looking forward to Christ. And I'm telling you, man, <laughs> I, I will share a personal story. Um, this is near and dear to my heart. Um, right before you said that prayer, we gave a battle axe to Susan Hannah, and her son had joined our program. You knew her son, Greg. We knew yes. him as Clyde. Yep. Um, Clyde grew his business from 500000 to $5 million plus in Austin. He was a recovering drug addict, and uh, he grew his business. He grew some of the anxiety, fears that come with success, and unfortunately, he had a relapse. And it wasn't on purpose, but accidentally, um, he passed away. And um, at that time period, he was in the, in the process of kind of um, – doing something with his mom and, and, and with his family that uh, really got halted by unfortunate circumstances. I say, you know, there's great equalizers of men. You've got drugs and alcohol, you've got women, and you've got greed. And, you know, without a higher power, without Jesus, without, you know, something to actually fill that emptiness in, in, inside, you know, I know that contractors out, there's a lot of people struggling. I know we set a prayer for the people that were struggling and 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 the story i have to tell you was is that about i don't know it was about two weeks ago clyde's parents reached out to me and they said they were ready to grow a roofing business and so i really i felt i'll oftentimes do feel clyde's spirit in my meditations um i do feel like uh it's part of my duty the more that i make an impact to give back more and you know clyde's inspired me to do many things but most importantly, I want to continue his legacy. And so his mom and his stepmom, his stepdad came to this event. And, uh, you know, I felt this presence in my hot tub. I was meditating and I had my arms out and I felt like Clyde was behind me, like this strong sense. And then something touched my hand. Wow. And it was a, it was a, it was a gecko. It was, <laughs> a, a, it was a lizard and I opened my eyes and that never happens and uh, it just made me really feel his presence. But then his, his mom came and actually shared pictures of, of, these, of what happened at his funeral. Did you see the pictures? Yeah, I saw the bonfire. 
It was a bonfire. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty awesome one. Yeah, you can definitely see in the photo <laughs> that there was some type of a apparition, a spirit. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to call it that. There was a the, presence there, there was that was pre- caught in the, in the camera shot. No, I don't believe in coincidences. No way. No, and, no, no. And so there was a lot of people there that were trying to take pictures to catch to capture um, orbs, apparitions, evidence of a spirit's life after death. And um, his mom was the only one who were, was able to capture that in, in photos. And so when she sent me those pictures and I saw it again after, you know, feeling his presence so far behind, from behind and literally being reached out and felt like I was being touched by somebody, uh, I, to me it felt like evidence that, you know, obviously the spirit's life continues after death. And, uh, you know, that that right there is something that's a very – uh, it freeing feeling. Um, you talk about eternal optimism and happiness. I guess that is the key to eternal optimism: is faith that there is a as, as a better place and a, and a point beyond this sufferings that we go through sometimes. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the dead are really not dead. So why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so when that photo manifests itself, <laughs> that you kind of saw a spirit essence there. Well, guess what? Clyde is alive and well. Um, everyone that dies goes to the spirit world. That's where they are. It's prison and paradise. <laughs> so they live their lives as we live our lives here. <laughs> and so, in fact, the spirit world in reality, what has been revealed to us through prophets, is that it's basically this world in which we live in is fashioned after that one. It's <laughs> actually in the same fashion. Buildings, streams, rivers. It has everything, but it's just more, much more glorious than this one. <laughs> And I love, I love, I love, I love the idea. And so I, I'm, I'm a guy who, who tries to learn from everybody and, you know, spiritual, higher power, Christian, Catholic, Baptist, Mormon, Muslim. I, I believe that there is an essence of God in all of some teachings. And, 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 you know, one thing I want to say is Omar, you've really, really impacted my life. Just your example of what it means to be a good man. And, in growing your business, you know, it's it's kind of challenging whenever you put so much energy, but yet it's hard to find people that are that are that are willing to put the energy that you are into life. And I think that might be the biggest challenge that 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 business owners have is that, you know, they they they, they want to grow their business, but they also they have this challenge of finding people that that match their 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 values. That's right. And so share, share with me some of the struggles and stuff that you've dealt with there. And that's really been it, you know, um, the last eight years we've had guys and gals who have come and gone. And so I'm always looking for the next Omar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's always the hope is that I find someone that has the same in- intensity and I care for my business as I do. And so it's always a struggle. You you think you found one, mm-hmm. and then six months, a year, they're gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's a constant struggle. And so, but... Uh, eventually, in this business, we just need a few key players. That's right. And, we don't uh, need a whole army. You just need a few key players, and they can make a whole lot of a difference. Eventually, we're looking for you know, uh, you know a f- couple of positions that need to be filled. We already got one filled. We're looking for another one. And so um, I think with those key positions filled and the prior third, a couple of sales guys here and there, uh, we're going to be all right. See, what I love about your operation is its efficiency because you keep a low overhead model and you do That's a lot right. of jobs. You do hundreds and hundreds of jobs, and you have always had a team. Um, you have uh, your wife. Tell, tell me a little bit about your team. My team, basically, uh, my wife is a real boss. You know, I call myself just a laborer. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, she basically r- runs the operations in the office. Right. Um, of course, she's great. We have an office girl named Brianna. And so they pretty much handled the internals of the business. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we did have a project manager, had to let him go, but we're getting ready to bring one back on board, and then, of course, a marketer. And more and importantly, so- when I called you the greatest roofing salesman of all time, it's because people are attracted to your energy. You have an incredible amount of uh, customers, uh, and talk about efficiency, you may have 
five people on your team, but you're knocking out 500 roofs. <laughs> that's all. And, that's, that's about it. And so with five-star ratings, getting three referrals from every client and your phone always ringing, it means that you would be the best person for me to partner with in Houston if I was going to choose a partner. And if you're watching this right now, I want to tell you one thing about the Houston market. It's huge. And how long have you been working it? And tell us the benefits of instead of being a storm chaser, being a storm catcher. Um, I just like being in the area where I am. And so um, I'm not one to travel much, you know, because the, the way I feel about it, there's enough business behind my neck of the woods. And so I simply, you know, trying to just handle my business from home. And there's a lot of opportunities in Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wide city, lots of opportunities, a lot of good, you know, people that live in the city. We're looking for these trades and services. A lot of storm damage, retail lot, clients. Oh, yeah, a you lot of storm damage. expanded yeah, that, your commercial division. Yep, that's um, what we're working on right now is getting into commercial. And that's a big question a lot of people have watching this is how to do it. One of the best ways to do it is the foam and coating market, liquid applied roofs. You know, you've got different systems and abilities but what i've seen omar do is 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 take some of these principles he's learned in our program and 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 recently did a direct mailer tell, tell us about how that worked out yeah basically um i teamed up with the fell out of um dallas and so um we kind of did an earlier drop during covid may have not been the right time because everybody things were just crazy at that time so i said wait a minute i think i got another one or two more drops <laughs> that need to go out you know, so I ended up calling him. I said, listen, time is right. I had been raining for like three weeks in Houston. So about three weeks ago, we ended up sending out the mail out. And from that and drop of 5,000 came seven solid leads. And I'm sure there's more coming in. And from that alone, I'm going to definitely make my investment back 10 times over. And so mail outs are important. They're yeah, essential. for commercial business owners, if you want to scale your commercial division, that's how we do it. We we do uh, hand address direct mail straight to the property owners. We we got a couple different campaigns. We got a survey campaign. We invite them to live dinners. We do a lot of different things. But the most important thing is is that um, you get contact through direct mail. You follow up by phone. You continue to follow up because. You know, what we're fixing to do is we're fixing to plug some of these same people that you sent direct mail into your Facebook ad campaigns. Yes. And we're going to make a video that allows you to make them an offer that, you know, hey, you received a, a, a letter from us and, you know, we just want you to not make a mistake on your roof. It's the biggest area of expense for commercial property owners with properties like yours. So we want to give you more education on a liquid applied roofing system. And so what whenever you can combine the direct mail with telemarketing, plus you can constantly be omnipresent with the Facebook ads in their phone the way I am in other people's phones. This is really how you, you know, kind of dominate the conversation and get customers to pull big chunks of money out of their pocket to pay. And so uh, that's what we're going to be implementing. But, you know, the biggest thing is, is like, um, tell us about, you know, a, a day in the life of Omar and, you know, and what it's like after uh, y'all had a pretty little good storm come through this year, earlier this year. Yep. Uh, what it's like right after a storm there in Houston with you? Basically, at the end of the day, as the storms come in, you know, of course, we get all our data. We know when it's coming because, uh, you know, the certain software that we use tend to <laughs> alert us when those storms come in. So at the end of the day, once that information comes in, you know, we get this, you know, the, the, the swath map. You know, at the end of the day, just imagine just pinpoint a location in that area. And we pretty much go to the point of attack. You know, we drive into the area and start basically get out of your truck, get out your truck. <laughs> Don't sit in your truck. You're a door-to-door -door warrior. And yeah. if you're going to war, you need to ne go next to a good soldier. And that, that my friend, is Omar. Exactly. And if I was, uh, 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 I consider myself, there's that story of one in a hundred uh, Greek warriors. Eighty of them are targets. Ten of them are decent fighters. Ten, nine of them are Good fighters and one of them are warriors. I think you're one in a million. But uh, <laughs> thank you. You know we we're 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 out here looking for uh, a guy, an Achilles warrior, a great warrior that would go alongside of Omar. And I'd go out there and say there's a two hundred thousand dollar reward for this guy that wants to you know help uh, really kind of step into a place where there's tons of referrals, the phone's ringing off the hook. There's a lot of leads. There's commercial and residential opportunity. That's right. And he and he really wants to. Um, find out how to run an efficient operation where 
a few people can support you selling 400, 500 jobs because the income that you make and the investments that you can make with that income and having your money making money for you, that's really where these roofers fail. I mean, yes. you've seen a lot of these guys. Yeah. And what wh what happens? What what do you think? They get they don't stay on. I think it's just basically is how society has built so many of us. You know, we're told from childhood, you know, go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a good job. And so the mentality is that it's that nine to five mentality that, you know, working for someone. And so when guys come into, of course, the um, our industry where it's basically commission based, uh, they don't know how to handle it that well. Um, because they, they've been used to getting a regular paycheck, but that paycheck is just a survival check. <laughs> it's not going to change much of their lives at all. We have an opportunity in our industry to actually change people's financial lives. Yes, it takes that 90 to 120 days to get really going <laughs> where the income starts to flow regularly, and some guys are not willing to do that. They're impatient. <laughs> And for the life of me, I never understand why they even go back to that three, four, five hundred dollar weekly paycheck when they can go out there within hours, <laughs> close one, two, three deals, and really just do some great things for them and their families if they only have that stick to it attitude. And I think at the end of the day, it's a matter they don't have enough faith. You know, that was a wonderful, <laughs> I guess, a video I just watched recently where this father and his, uh, I think it was his daughter. Uh, he basically uh, had a little, uh, he presented her with basically uh, some amount of money that was very paltry. And at one point, he, was, he had set the money out on the kitchen counter, and then he said, get it. And then he was actually holding the child back not to go get what he had just offered them. Mm. And then eventually, after a while, he actually let them go to go get what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And guess what he did next? Mm. He then pulled out, I think it was a wad, <laughs> yeah. and said, guess what? You see, you end up chasing that because you couldn't wait. Mm -hmm. well, if you'd waited, you could have had a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. And so it is with our, you know, the guys that come into this industry. They get excited in the beginning. You know, we provide them the training. I personally go out with my guys, to actually, in the streets with them. And I tell them what it can be. I haven't given them the first two or three deals <laughs> just to motivate them. To say, hey, listen, this is going to happen for you. But some people don't have the work ethic. And I know sooner they get that nice five, ten thousand dollar check after those deals go through, you start, you don't see them anymore. <laughs> or their performance just goes down. They lose focus. And sooner or later, they're, out, they're gone. And they go back to the JOB. <laughs> And that's the sad part is some of these guys, they treat this roofing business like a J-O-B. And when they have success and it makes them that a certain amount of money, whether it's $100,000, 150000 180000 they, they can't tap into that tank. What makes you, after, after, while you're putting money away, you're growing your family, you're making great money, how do you keep pushing? Well, at the end of the day, I'm, I've always been a hard worker. And I try to love this industry. I love it. That's the key. You love it. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys who do this, this, this business love what we do. So if you don't have a passion for what you do, and you, you're probably just looking for a paycheck, yeah, you may just not even last long. Mm -hmm. But because I have a passion to wake up every day, I wake up every day excited. Mm -hmm. You know, like once again, I'm eternally optimistic. Mm -hmm. You know, my day starts off with daily prayer and scripture study with my family and, of course, personal. So I already wake up. My day is already set up right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. When I've already connected with my father in heaven. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. And so <laughs> when you get started in the morning, yeah, sometimes there's a lot of, you know, at night you go to bed with all this news, today's news. Bill, I, I turned off the news, my friend. Yeah, I exactly. Watch the news exactly. Anymore. Today I wake up. Bill Cosby let out, freed. <laughs> Seventy women done said he drugged him and put him to sleep, and, and I mean, and it's bad. But then it's like, Me Too movement under attack. But it's like, man. Do you think there's a battle in this world between good and evil? Well, that's the, it's the age-old battle. It started way before you and I were ever born. <laughs> As many of you know, if you go into the book of Revelations or just in the scriptures in general, the war in heaven, and that's where it started. You know, Christ and Lucifer, <laughs> you know, who later became Satan. And his name actually means, in the Greek, Diabolos means divider. <laughs> 
And I believe that the great <laughs> divider is happening in, in our schools when they're yep. trying to teach us all this crazy stuff. Yep, yep. Get our kids to separate and think that race is just the, key, uh, the, the only thing in this world to focus on. And they, I mean, it's just crazy. They bring, the, bring it to our attention every chance they get. And more importantly, you see, you're, you're down in Texas and Houston, this border crisis, yeah. which for us, I mean, drives down the price of labor. So, <laughs> But at the same time, the kids... And, and, and for me, like, you know, our, our guy, Russell Brunson, he's introduced me to Tim Ballard, who's yep, yep. the guy with the I underground railroad, who's saving these kids from, from being trafficked. But all this open border stuff and this battle for good and evil, to me, is just a reason for these cartels to send more drugs in to kill people, for people to be sucked into human trafficking. And it's like, this all happened when? When... When COVID got loose, I mean, you know, it's always it went on way before then. It just has been multiplied a thousand times. But remember, somebody said the best: nothing in politics happened by accident or by design. So how do we? <laughs> so how do, don't, don't let them fool you. So, it, so yeah. with the price of plywood going up 60, 70 bucks a sheet, material shingles now ninety one dollars a square. All these different things happening in the world. Um, what are you doing to defend your business and your American dream and, and your family's future? I mean, what else you? Can, I mean, what else can you not do? Because at the end of the day, the circumstances have presented themselves as they are. We can't change what the boys at the top are doing. Oh, nope. <laughs> at the end of the day, we just got to keep on keeping on, making sure we're providing the best quality service uh, and the best products for our clients. And yeah, some of them do understand they have to pay a little bit more. Now, the beautiful thing that what we do is that you know we're here to save our clients thousands of thousands of dollars. Because guess what? It's insurance restoration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got our retail clients out there as well. But at the end of the day, as long as that homeowner or commercial property owner has a policy on that on that property, guess what? The insurance is always the best angle. Yes. <laughs> so that kind of alleviates some of that expense on their end, the end user. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if we can get the insurance company to cover the losses... <laughs> Then everybody wins. Amen. Well, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. They, I mean, they, they pay for the increase in, in material because they have to when they adjust those estimates that they write. Amen. And this, that's why we call it recession proof profits. And that's what the Blue Collar American Dream that's is right. all about. We have a big idea the Blue Collar American Dream Tour, where we're going to bring real estate experts, insurance restoration experts, general contractors, solar experts. Uh, and I'm coming to Houston. Nice. Um, and you're going to be one of my first stops. Sweet. And we're going to do a big live event. We're going to get a lot of people that are interested in a crazy business opportunity and, and, and really disrupting the entire system because I believe saving the trades isn't about doing the jobs. It's about selling the jobs. And you know right. what? There is a way to put some of these people to work and there is a way to make the world a better place and there is a way to beat the toughest negotiators in the world to fund the whole thing to make it happen. Exactly. And it's a beautiful thing. And it gives confidence to anybody who is able to build the type of business that you you know you with you know five people doing you know millions and millions of dollars in business over a long period of time phone ringing off the hook reoccurring customers nonstop all in one location i mean that's what it really means to have a solid local roof in business and it's certainly provided a great life for you and your family and you know the one thing about this platform is we're grateful for the example you set clean life high energy good optimism and faith in the lord combined with hard work and you don't have the issues that plague some of the rest of the contractors of yeah. of of mental anguish of depression of despair and i'm sure you go through your tough times but i've known you for a really long time and i can always count on you like a rock man to 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 be positive to to, to be in that strong mental condition and and i know that it means a lot for me, but it probably means a lot to so many people, not just in the Sky Diamonds community, but to all the roofers, you know, and I, and it's evident with how many people watched your YouTube video and continue to watch it. And so, um, I just want everybody to know, like, um, you know, about five years ago, I was desperate. I was piled up million dollars in bills. I didn't know where the supply companies were going to get their money. I didn't know where payroll was going to come from. I found myself in church, giving my finances up to the Lord. I found myself, you know, asking for help out of desperation, humbled, and that's when things really started to change. That's where uh, my transformation began, and you know, you've kind of inspired me to share my journey and that 
impactful message and use my platform the way it's supposed to be used. You know, Myron Goldman, he taught me a prayer. You know, it's kind of a version of King Solomon's prayer. You know, God grant me the wisdom that you, to, to serve the people you put me on this earth to serve in the way that you want me to serve them. You know, and that's something that I say to myself every single day. And I, and I just know um, when I think about what I'm supposed to be doing, I think, well, what would Omar think about this situation? <laughs> um, and, you know, like I said, if I was a salesperson, I was an entrepreneur, I was a good sales manager, there's a lot of these guys that work for big companies, but the guys in charge of the companies don't have the moral fortitude, they don't have the hard work ethic, they don't have your eternal optimism. And so the biggest company in Houston may may have somebody there that, the, that a high, highly talented sales manager, salesperson is working for, and you might say, you know what, man? This guy's doing just as many roofs as we're doing. There's, there's, there's less people. This, this guy is going to show me how to make more bang for the buck and then deal with less headache. Plus, I can be more aligned with someone with my core values. I'm going I'm to leave this guy, and I'm going to come join this guy. And I'll be honest with you. I've been this guy before. <laughs> I've been the guy that didn't pay enough attention, that was too narcissistic, that was all up my own ass, or that was focused on the wrong things in life. And, you know, whenever you fire your boss or, or, or they, uh, that person quits, you know, a lot of people, they say, you know, that you can't find good people that have already worked for roofing companies or contracting companies. And yeah, there, everyone does have bad habits. There, there is some bit of truth to the fact that there's a large percent of wannabes. Like if they were really good at their business, why would they leave the other business? But in the same sense, a lot of times there's a lot of, salespeople and employees that outgrow their boss. And they, and I think that your character, your core values, your, your ability to, you know, just constantly do the next right thing and be good at this job, very good at the highest level would, would attract a highly skilled top performer in Houston, Austin, Dallas Fort Worth that wanted to scale and, and, and Omar's looking to build in Dallas he's looking to build in Austin he's looking to build um, in other areas outside of Houston and around Houston and Houston's big enough with that that, that O&M could have multiple locations and so yep. if you're watching this and 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 you you you, you dig Omar's spirit and his approach uh, I want you to know he's legit he's one of the best salespersons I've ever met arguably the greatest roofing salesman in the world beyond that Running a highly efficient small model with high profits is something a guy with a lot of overhead can sometime even look at and say, man, I wish I ran my business that way. And so I can say to this, if you're watching, like I would reach out to Omar immediately, find him, and how can they get a hold of you? Well, basically, um, my number is 832-969-2246. You can call me directly. You can stop by my office in Stafford, Texas. And so, um, of course, you can, you know, those are pretty much two of the ways you can Hit him up on me. Facebook. Facebook Omar well. All Golly. Yeah. And uh, you can my company's name. Or uh, you can comment below on this, and I'll make sure that he gets your information. If you're watching this YouTube video and you want to be a part of Omar, you just feel his spirit, then, uh, look, comment below, and I'll get you in touch with Omar. It's my job. I'm his guide. And we're partnered up. We, we decided to take the next step and, and we've been working together for a really long time. So uh, what I wanted to do was, you know, kind of call out anybody who wanted to be a part of our movement. And if that's you, comment below. Um, you know, the big picture is I'm trying to build, you know, with Omar, with everyone in the Sky Diamonds Network, the wealthiest organization in roofing in the world so that we can give back more. And I want to give back more to the people that struggle with mental illness, that struggle with addiction and things like that, but also people that don't have any options, that, that, that are orphans and, and that, that don't have clean water and that don't have, yep. you know, and the, you know, the thing about it is, is like with so many of these um, uh, people that uh, are all about the money, they, they do, they do make it, the entrepreneur, the guy who's out there trying to make evil, and, yeah. and you do you, have you ever experienced the people thinking that you're all about because you, you, how how do you define that line? Like, well, it's all about what your priorities are, you know. And sometimes I, what well, keeps me back and even greater growth, as my wife and I often discuss, is that. Is send the priorities because you know I've got we you know I've got responsibility to walk, the family, the Lord and His church because I do serve in my church, and of course I got a business to run, 
And so sometimes we have this conversation, my wife and I, <laughs> that if we get too big, might something be lacking in the spiritual realm. Because as you're trying to grow a business, sometimes your time is divided. And so that's always been my apprehension sometimes and grown to, the, you know, to where I want to go. And then at the end of the day, I always think about, well, Omar, you do have sufficient for your needs. <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs> but, you know, we have to, of course, increase and grow. And if we can help other people along the way, that's even, even better. So that's always been sometimes my apprehension. And that way, because I, I want to lose focus on the things of the Lord. And of course, his family, you know, all that, all that type of stuff that, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in our business yeah. that those other areas may suffer. Well, let me and explain so. my, my, <laughs> my, me getting bigger has allowed me to hire more people, which gives me more time to do the things that puts me closer to the Lord. So, That's and it true. gives me more of a um, platform to make an impact to help more people. It also gives me more money to help more people. And it also... It's like the combined energy of a bunch of spirits. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, don't, I can't explain the effort. Like <laughs> momentum. It's like spiritual momentum. Yep. All the people that are getting help in the Sky Diamonds. All the people are getting help on this YouTube. All the people that are getting help in the company. What it just seems to um, create good luck. And well, when you're generally doing good things, there's a tendency that the Lord some somehow regenerates us, to, or gives us greater capacity to do more. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. I mean, it's a it's a it's actually it's a gospel principle. Um, as you do good, and yes, you be given more capacity to do good, because the Lord knows that He can trust us. You know, as I've been our scripture study this week has to do with stewardships. You know, um, in life we're all given a stewardship. You know, your stewardship may be your family, your profession, whatever responsibilities we've been given is a stewardship. And the law says we have to give an accounting of our stewardships in the day of judgment. <laughs> that the things he's given us, how have we used them? Mm. And so, um, so the more good you do in this world, the more capacity and the more trust the Lord places on us. Mm. And that's just how Man, it I is. Man, I thought about that, dude, because I was thinking, you know, the amount of burden. And, you know, I'm certainly not putting like a Donald Trump guy on some platform to make him some sort of great he healing person of the world. But he certainly had a lot of weight on his shoulders while yes. he was the president of the United true, States true. with all this stuff going on. True. And I think about, are my shoulders strong enough to carry that weight? Is my faith strong enough to carry that weight? Am I built to carry an entire world? And the answer is, you know, right now, probably no. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, I, I have to get stronger to be able to carry the weight. I mean, I was doing that boot camp thing, and all these guys came and lifted a 900-pound tire, and I couldn't lift it. <laughs> and uh, I felt like a just absolute joke because I go to the <laughs> boxing gym all the time. But they were stronger than me in that department. So there's always going to be this, this area of life that humbles you. And uh, one thing that, you know, humbles me is like the little speck of time that I have on this earth. And like I said, at the beginning of this episode, how it, regenerating it was for my spirit um, to get a close, I don't know, I encounter with an old friend that's no longer here. And then to see that he led his mom here to see his mom and his, and his stepdad have, you know, an incredible transformational time. And then to, to, to get to really kind of get um, affirmation that your spirit moves past death. I mean, that to me is a uh, great gift. Forget about the money. Forget about anything else. I was very grateful for that over the last couple of days. But uh, I can tell you all this. I mean, uh, I have a passion for helping blue collar entrepreneurs. Um, it's not just about building wealth because we want to live like a king. It's that we want to give back like a king. That's right. And... Um, I just want to make a comment about what you said earlier as you were having your difficulties five years ago and then of course you you know turned yourself you kind of turned your life over to the Lord and then now you mentioned about giving uh, and one of course one of the principles we believe in is tithing you know tithing at the end of the day which basically means a tenth that's really what it means and so um, some people have a difficulty especially those of us who are Christians have a difficulty giving that tenth but on the other side of it, consider the the ruler and the governor and the creator of this universe only asked ten percent ten percent of us of what we of course of our increase. I mean, he's given us he's basically telling us we can retain ninety percent. 
Now, who does not want to have that kind of a, a bank uh, uh, investor who tells you, hey, just give me 10% of what you earn. You keep the rest. I don't think we have any uh, anyone on this earth that does that for us. No, so, and it's something It's a I... wonderful principle. And that's how my blessings have always come. Sometimes people ask me, oh, my, why are you so successful? No, why are you successful? I said, well, I strive to live my life the way the Lord has commanded. And then we try to give and do good. And, yeah, we, we're excited to play our tithing every week. <laughs> right. I mean, we don't fool around. <laughs> yeah, mean, see, I haven't so found a good church here yet. And I, and, I'm, and I would say, you know, I try to say in my mind that my tithing is every time that I give back to a charitable cause or every time I invest into someone or do something that is, you know, without business or return. And I, I, I definitely do give 10% to a cause. But... You know, I have to be more clear, more intentional. When I visited Andy Frisella's office, I saw that he had an orphanage that he fully funded in Haiti, and I thought, man, we've got to do that. We've got yep. to go, we've we've got to get a complete human, like a whole group of people, completely dependent on on what we're creating, and and then go there and 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 have mission trips. And that's right. And so I, I talked to you a little bit about that as an intention and what we want to do with our with our impact on the world. And so you know. Yep. And I'll, you know, you go go to go to places where there's more uh, of a third world conditions, and you just have no idea how lucky we have it over. Yeah, we're blessed. I mean, to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as the Lord blesses us, you know, we are our brothers keep after all. We have to help the least of these uh, who might not be in a situation that's favorable. So we can never overlook the poor and the needy. <laughs> That's right, man. We've got to help them. <laughs> That's got right. To help. And so in the poor and the needy in this world, they like to cuss me on my Facebook ads. Those are the knucklehead roofers that are not coachable, that are out there <laughs> drinking beer and, and, and falling off the roofs. But that's okay because here's the deal, man. Um, I'm the roughnecks guy, you know. I'm, I'm the blue collars guy. And uh, I'm just like them. I am them. And so um, hopefully if you're watching this, it doesn't matter if you don't think you're a salesman or if you're a roofer or if you're an owner or just a young kid starting out, man. Um, the truth is, is that we're all in this journey. We're all human. We're all after, um, you know, there's a, there's a thing that I heard is called the pursuit of happiness is what messes up people because it's a constant pursuit of goals, financial goals, where it's an insatiable sap appetite of do more, do more, do yeah. more, do more, do more. It's almost like you're setting yourself up for a life of suffering Yep. <laughs> uh, versus just look around. You're standing upright. We're here. Sometimes we're, less is more. <laughs> we're, we're, we're sharing, we're sharing our, our, our faith and we're going to be viewed millions of hours and this is going to make an impact and change lives. And today is a beautiful day to be alive. And That's right. forget about the pursuit of happiness and what the big picture plan for me is to build the wealthiest organization in the world. I got the wealthiest organization of wealthiest hour of time, you know, because I'm here right now and tomorrow's not guaranteed. And so my point is, is like, you know, just be grateful for where you're at, you know, um, give thanks. I know that, uh, we're very grateful that you were uh, going to show up and, and and bless us, even though tomorrow you kept your shoes clean. And yesterday, <laughs> yesterday you kept your shoes. Yeah, I didn't participate in that uh, in that uh, Titan workout or Spartan <laughs> workout. I was like, nah. That's why I, they've now coined a new name for me, Omar Too Clean. Omar Too Clean. But let me tell you, Omar Too Clean would participated with the group. Omar Too Clean was there. He had good spirit. His spirit was needed at the end. He stung, He hung around there and stayed apart. You were there for the for the fraternity aspect of it, yep. for, the, for the for the you know fellowship. I was a cheerleader. And the hey man, <laughs> you know, a lot of us contractors ain't a lot of people cheering for us. So uh, everybody out there just wants you to know I'm your cheerleader. So hey man, I enjoyed having you for this second round. We'll have sure. to do this again. This was a great episode. Like I said before, if you want to partner up and work with me and Omar in the Texas market, just comment below and I'll get you in touch and we'll start working. But hey, man, till next time, buddy. Appreciate Hit it, em. Omar. Too clean, my golly, Miss Molly. Good golly, it's our golly. All right. Signing off, baby. Take care, y'all. See y'all. <laughs>